Fair trade coffee is coffee that is certified as having been produced to fair trade standards. Fair trade organizations create trading partnerships that are based on dialogue, transparency and respect, that seeks greater equity in international trade. These partnerships contribute to sustainable development by offering better trading conditions to coffee bean farmers. Fair trade organizations are engaged actively in supporting producers and sustainable environmental farming practices. Fair trade practices prohibit child or forced labor. History Prior to fair trade, prices were regulated by the International Coffee Organization according to the regulations set forth by the International Coffee Agreement of 1962. This agreement, which was negotiated at the United Nations by the Coffee Study Group, set limits on the amount of coffee traded between countries so there would be no excess supply and consequent drop in price. The ICA existed for five years, and then was renewed in 1968. The agreement was renegotiated in 1976 due to increasing coffee prices, largely a result of a severe frost in Brazil. The new agreement allowed for the suspension of price quotas if the supply of coffee could not meet the demand, and enabling them if prices dropped too low. In 1984, the agreement was again redrawn, this time creating a database on coffee trade, and implementing stricter import and export regulations. Fair trade certification was then introduced in 1988 following a coffee crisis in which the supply of coffee was greater than the demand. Since no price quotas had been re implemented by the International Coffee Act, the market was flooded. Launched in the Netherlands, fair trade certification aimed to artificially raise coffee prices in order to ensure growers sufficient wages to turn a profit. The original name of the organization was Max Havilar. After a fictional Dutch character who opposed the exploitation of coffee farmers by Dutch colonialists in the East Indies. The organization created a label for products that met certain wage standards. Quotas remained a part of the agreement until 1989, when the organization was unable to negotiate a new agreement in time for the next year. It was decided that the 1983 agreement would be extended, but without the quotas because they had not yet been determined. A new agreement could not be negotiated until 1992. From 1990 to 1992, without the quotas in place, coffee prices reached an all-time low because coffee price quotas could not be decided. The agreements of 2001 and 2007 aimed to stabilize the coffee economy by promoting coffee consumption, raising the standard of living of growers by providing economic counseling, expanding research to include niche markets and quality relating to geographic area, and conducting studies of sustainability. Principles similar to fair trade. Following the inception of fair trade certification, the transfer Label was later launched in Germany, and within ten years three other labeling organizations commenced, the Fair Trade Foundation, Transfair USA, and Ratweismarkt. In 1997, these four organizations jointly created Fair Trade International formerly called FLO, or Fair Trade Labeling Organizations International, which continues to set fair trade standards, inspecting and certifying growers. Fair trade organizations The fair trade labeling organizations having most of the market share and who sell through supermarkets refer to a definition developed by FINE, an association of four international fair trade networks Fair Trade Labeling Organizations International, World Fair Trade Organization WFTO, Network of European World Shops and European Fair Trade Association EFTA. The standards developed by Fair Trade Labeling Organization are the most widely used. Certification scheme The certification scheme is run by Fair Trade International Coffee packers pay Fair Trade a fee for the right to use the Fair Trade logo, which gives consumers an assurance that the coffee meets Fair Trade criteria. The coffee with this certification mark must be produced by farmers and cooperatives that meet these criteria. Topic: <coughs> Coffee retailers. Coffee retailers are not restricted by fair trade to sell fair trade coffee as a premium product and charge as much as they like for the coffee. Topic: 
Topic: Importers. Importers of fair trade coffee have to be registered with fair trade and pay a fee. Under the Fair Trade International standards, they are obliged to pay a minimum price to the exporting organization, currently $1.40 C per pound New York Board of Trade C contract, FOB origin for Arabica, and $1.05 for Robusta London e -E Lift contract, FOB origin with 30 C per pound extra for organic. When the world price is above this level, they are obliged to pay 20 C per pound above the world price. Exporters Certified fair trade coffee is normally exported by secondary or tertiary cooperatives, marketing this coffee on behalf of the cooperatives the farmers belong to with arrangements that may be complex. There is not enough demand to take all the certified coffee produced, so most has to be sold as uncertified. In 2001 only 13.6% could be sold as certified so limits were placed on new cooperatives joining the scheme. This plus an increased demand put up sales of certified to around 50% in 2003 with a figure of 37% commonly cited in recent years. Some exporting cooperatives do not manage to sell any of their output as certified, and others sell as little as 8%. The exporting cooperatives incur costs including certification and inspection fees, additional marketing costs, costs of conforming to standards, and additional costs of cooperative operation, costs which are incurred on all coffee production, even if little or none is marketed as certified, with a higher price, so the cooperatives may make a loss on fair trade membership. Weber reports cooperatives not able to cover the extra costs of a marketing team for fair trade, with one covering only 70% of these costs after six years of fair trade membership. Any deficit after paying these costs means a lower price for farmers, while any surplus will normally go on social projects for common goals organized by the exporting cooperative rather than as extra payment for farmers. These may include the building of classrooms, baseball fields, or the establishment of women's groups, for instance. Enforcement of standards FlowCert, a for-profit business owned by Fairtrade International, handles producer certification, inspecting and certifying producer organizations in more than 50 countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. In the fair trade debate there are many complaints of failure to enforce these standards, with farmers, cooperatives, importers and packers. The marketing system The marketing system for fair trade and non-fair trade coffee is identical in the consuming countries, using mostly the same importing, packing, distributing and retailing firms. Some independent brands operate a virtual company, paying the normal importers, packers and distributors and advertising agencies to handle their brand rather than doing it themselves. For cost reasons, many fair trade organizations remain that adhere to a greater or smaller degree to the original objectives of fair trade than the mainstream of Fair Trade International and its associate. These market products through alternative channels where possible, and market through specialist fair trade shops, but they have a small proportion of the total market. Criticisms Criticisms of fair trade have been made as a result of independent research, and these are summarized in the fair trade debate. There are also some criticisms of fair trade specific to coffee. Colleen Haidt of the Stanford Innovation Review argues that fair trade coffee is merely a way to market the idea of ethical consumerism. Quality and transparency concerns regarding coffee are increasingly common amongst some consumers and coffee companies, as seen through the rise of the third-wave coffee movement. Maintaining a balance between ethical and higher-quality coffee may be difficult with fair trade coffee due to what some coffee roasters deem as insufficient quality incentive within many fair trade certified coffee farms. Deborah Six research, involving interviews with coffee farmers in Costa Rica, finds that many farmers often produce more fair trade coffee than they can sell, so will often end up selling to independent buyers that will often pay more than fair trade buyers can. 
Some scholars are concerned of the artificial stimulation of coffee production, especially since worldwide demand for coffee is relatively inelastic. Many who believe fair trade coffee is insufficient utilize the direct trade model, which allows for more control over quality concerns, farmer empowerment, and sustainability issues. It also is valuable in harboring closer farmer to roaster business relationships, which can ultimately increase quality of life and profits for coffee growers and buyers alike. However, direct trade is a new concept that is only utilized by for-profit businesses like Counterculture Coffee and Intelligentsia Coffee and therefore has no third-party certification. See also Anti-globalization Organic agriculture Rainforest Alliance Sustainable Coffee World Trade Organization